Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I drive a car. I don't drive it very fast, though I try to stay well underneath the speed limit to a fault. You, you shouldn't do that. You should stay close to the speed limit, not go well under it like I do. Uh, you know, 25 miles per hour in a 65 mile per hour zone, unheard of, unless you're me. I don't drive that slow. And there are a lot of people who drive really fast. That's what they do for a living. They're race car drivers. Uh, and uh, did you know that there's a lot of technology that goes in to race cars, specifically Formula One race cars? Uh, we shared a story uh, really breaking down uh, two of the top technologies uh, for Formula One cars. Uh, and John McKinley, uh, one of our gnomies, uh, is now a regular contributor to LockerGnome.com. As I've said many times, if you guys want to blog about something geeky uh, on a regular basis, drop me a line, chris at perillo.com. We'd love to welcome you into the fold and share your stories with the rest of our community. Uh, so instead of me talking about Formula One technology, uh, I thought I'd turn it over to... Uh, this damn Scotsman, because he's got a better accent than I do. Everybody has an accent, but I think his his accent, you'll understand, it's thick. His accent's thicker than a milkshake. That's not a, it's a mine's more like a runny milkshake, which is just disgusting. So, uh, John, before I, I dig myself a deeper hole here, uh, do you mind explaining, you know, the technologies that you've discussed in your article and why you found it interesting to present? Sure. Uh... I'll start off with the fact that posting for Locker Gnome is, still gives me a heck of a novelty value at the moment, but I'm assuming it'll probably get old fast. However, uh, Formula One, in this instance, is the pinnacle of motorsport. So uh, the FIA, who govern uh, Formula One, always add different things to the regulations to push the sport forward, or in this case, for the first thing I talk about, which is CARES, or the Kinetic Energy Recovery System, uh, they can add them to re regular road cars. Uh, CARES harvests energy that you use from braking, puts it either into a battery or into a flywheel, and when you're not using or you don't want to use your petrol engine you flick a switch and you go into battery mode or flywheel mode flywheel mode is the better one because you're not having as a state change you're not changing well, no, no, I'm sorry, not to interrupt. You know, it's interesting. You talked about this technology trickling down into consumer cars? Yes. Uh, I know that the Lexus uh, uses a CARES-like system. It takes uh, electrical energy, uh, puts it into a battery, and then you can flick a switch on your dashboard and change from your petrol engine to your battery. In the case of Formula One, it's a boost button that sits on their wheel, which has a myriad of knobs and buttons on it. In Formula One, you only get 80 brake horsepower from this system. Which Wait, is... how, how, did you say 80 horsepower? 80 brake horsepower, 8-0 which is 60 kilowatts of electrical energy or 400 kilojoules of mechanical energy. That's a lot! Which gives 6.67 .6 seconds per lap that you can use this, which is around a tenth to four tenths of a second per lap. Doesn't sound like much, but in Formula One, one tenth is the difference between pole position and second. So then DRS, this is another type of technology that's been integrated in uh, Formula One race cars. Drag, redu drag reduction system. That is where at the back of a Formula One car you have a wing, a, an absolutely huge wing. DRS allows you for when you're overtaking at a strategic point called the DRS activation zone, it allows you to lower a flap, 
which effectively dumps the drag and downforce, basically a smart word for drag, uh, from the Formula One car and allows it to effectively effectively go 10 to 12 kilometers per hour faster. Yeah, and, and it, this is something that is also starting to become available in uh, regular old cars. Uh, you had a comment on the, in the blog post uh, that he said it's, uh, it looks like Raider Key had posted, it's worth pointing out that there are DRS-like systems on road cars too, giving them what is commonly known as active aerodynamics. Yeah, I noticed that, and I did reply, although I can't see it uh, here, I did reply saying, ah, this is one time where I am more than happy to be wrong, because as far as I was aware, DRS hadn't been integrated into road cars, although then again, I should know better, because most of these teams spend hundreds of millions of pounds, because most of them are in, uh, in the UK, apart from Ferrari, which is in Italy, obviously, and they spend a lot of money researching, developing these systems, and you've got people like Ferrari and Mercedes who build cars. You know, it's well, build. It, sure. Well, it's interesting though. The sport that I honestly, I've, I, I maybe have seen a couple of lapses flipping through channels that the technology trickles down, much like other industries. Uh, the technology that's developed for a specific application can be reused, specifically uh, in the consumer space. Yeah, it is something that I know that there are many Formula One fans are more interested in the engineering than the race itself. So there are a lot of uh, car geeks, is what you're saying? Yes, basically. <laughs> and you get a lot of people that like NASCAR. However, NASCAR is just going round and oval, and it's not just my opinion on this one. There are many people who don't see why people like NASCAR. Wait, wait are you starting a flame war? No. 